crafted to operate beyond the limits of the law, Camille serves as the principal intelligencer of Clan Ferros, an elegant yet deadly agent tasked with ensuring the smooth functioning of both Piltover's lofty machine and Zon's shadowy underbelly. Adaptable and ruthlessly precise, Camille sees any lack of finesse as an effort that must be corrected. Her mind is as sharp as the blade she wields, and her relentless quest for perfection has led her to pursue Hextech body enhancements, leaving many to question whether she remains more human or machine. Welcome back, lore lovers. Today, online drag we delve into the intricate tale of Camille, the enigmatic principal intelligencer of Clan Ferros. From her tragic past in Piltover to her rise as a formidable force in the shadows, Camille's story is one of ambition, transformation, and the sacrifices made in the pursuit of power. So grab your favorite drink, settle in, and let's unravel the layers of her captivating journey. Forced to execute missions beyond the law's reach, Camille is a refined yet little operative, ensuring both Piltover's high society and Zon's seedy underworld operate without disruption. Her greatest strength lies in her adaptability and meticulous attention to detail, dismissing any lack of precision as a disgrace that must be corrected. Raised in privilege and wealth, Camille took on the role of principal intelligencer of Grand Ferros, slicing through her family's darker dilemmas with calculated accuracy. Her mind, as sharp as the blades she wields, drives her relentless pursuit of perfection, leading to extensive hexed body augmentations, which have sparked questions about whether Camille is now more machine than human. The Ferros family, wealthy from harvesting rare crystals from creatures in a distant desert, build their empire on the power of these first hex crystals, which contain magical energy typically reserved for those with natural magical abilities. Camille's great-great-aunt Elysia nearly lost her life and her arm during an early expedition to gather these precious crystals, a sacrifice that was celebrated within the family. Her bravery left a lasting legacy, embodied in the family's motto, For family will I give. Yet, the bracken creatures that provided these crystals were not an endless resource. Camille's family turned to synthetic alternatives, creating hex crystals through chemtech and runic alchemy. Though less potent, these synthetic crystals were easier to produce. Though not without cost, rumors suggest that their creation contributed heavily to the pollution known as the Zone Grey. Born into Piltover's Blue Wind Court, Camille was the sixth child of Rodri and Gemma, the leaders of Clan Ferros. However, she and her younger brother Stephen were the only two children to survive into adulthood. With Camille being the eldest, her family spared no expense in her education. From a young age, she was instilled with an aristocratic bearing and a profound sense of duty. Camille's upbringing was one of privilege, with the finest minds of Valoran visiting Piltover and serving as her tutors. She mastered languages like Zune, dialect of southern Ionia, and Ur, Noxian fluently. She also took a deep interest in Valorant's history, studying and learning ancient Shuriman, while accompanying her father on archaeological digs in the Odin Valley. Camille's talents extended beyond intellect. She was an accomplished musician, playing the Selovina at a concert master level. In Piltover's elite circles, it was tradition for a younger child to take on the role of the family's principal intelligencer, the clan's protector and enforcer. This person would act in the family's best interest, safeguarding their secrets and ensuring their continued success. For Clan Ferros, this position held immense importance, and they invested heavily in training their chosen intelligencers. Camille's brother Stephen, frail and sickly from birth, was deemed unfit for the role. The family, especially her father, was proud when Camille took on the responsibility in Stephen's place. As she embraced the role, Camille underwent rigorous training, excelling in combat, espionage, and interrogation. Stephen's envy grew as he watched Camille thrive in the world he had been denied. Camille, however, became a master in her duties, favoring techniques such as wielding the Sean Xan footed glaive, extracting secrets through refined interrogation, and repelling down Zon's clock towers with a grappling hook, a skill she had learned from the Western Serpent Isles. If you are enjoying the lore and want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Your support helps Lion Drag grow, allowing me to bring you even more fascinating stories from the world of League of Legends. Thank you for being a part of our community. At the age of 25, Camille and her father were ambushed by a group of augmented thugs. These criminals sought to rise within Zone's underworld by uncovering the family's most valuable secrets. Although Camille survived the attack, her father did not. 
His death cast a deep shadow over the pharaoh's household, and Camille's mother, devastated by grief, passed away soon after. The title of clan master was then inherited by Camille's younger brother, Stephen, who was eager to prove his leadership. Stephen, impulsive and determined to cement his strength, doubled down on the pharaoh's family's research into human hextech augmentation. A year after the loss of her parents, the pharaoh's house prepared for the next progress day, and Stephen personally inducted Hakim Naderi, a talented young crystallographer from the Shuriman coastal city of Belzun, as the lead artificer of the family. Still haunted by her failure to save her father, Camille sought to transcend her human limits and requested extra augmentation from Hakim. When they met, Hakim was immediately drawn to Camille, and she resolved to pull her from the shadows of grief. Together they worked late into the night, bonding over the shared task and tales of Shuriman's golden desert. After months of intimate collaboration, Camille could no longer deny that she returned her Kim's affections. However, they both knew their time together would soon end with her augmentation. Her Kim would move on to other projects, and Camille would return fully to her role as the family's principal intelligencer. Her Kim's greatest fear was that in replacing Camille's heart with a hextech device, she would strip her of her humanity as well. As the day of Camille's operation approached, Hakim worries grew. He proposed marriage, begging Camille to abandon her duties and run away with him. He painted an idyllic future, wandering through the sunlit sands of Belzun, uncovering the ruins of Shurima and raising a family together. For the first time in her life, Camille found herself torn between love and duty. Stephen, whose position as clan master relied heavily on Camille's skill and loyalty, discovered the secret proposal. Fearing he might lose his hold on the family, he devised a plan to remind Camille of the duty she had sworn to their father. The next time he knew Camille would be with Hakim, Stephen arranged to be attacked. Using his fragile health as a weapon, bloodied and battered, he appeared before Camille, invoking memories of their father's death and preying on her guilt. The sight of her injured brother made Camille realize the potential consequences of divided loyalties. Despite Hakim's pleas, Camille chose her duty over love. She was determined that her role as the principal intelligencer, a duty passed down through generations, was one she could not abandon. If she had been more prepared, she believed she could have saved her father and prevented her brother's injury. With her mind resolute, Camille insisted the surgery proceed and ended her relationship with Hakim. Hakim's love for Camille remained unwavering, and he knew he was the only one capable of performing the risky surgery she desired. Determined to ensure her survival, he carefully removed her heart, knowing it was what she wanted. Once he was certain her new mechanical heart would function independently, Hakim made the heart-wrenching decision to resign. When Camille awoke, she found the lab they had shared completely empty, the space echoing with memories of what had been. Throwing herself into her work, Camille sought further enhancements, adding bladed legs, grapple spindled hips, and various other minor hex augmentations. Each modification pushed both her and the burgeoning technology into their limits, leading some to question how much of the woman Camille had once been still remained. As Clan Ferros grew in power and wealth, the missions Camille undertook for her brother became increasingly dark and deadly. Thanks to the rejuvenating vibrations of her hextech heart, time passed for Camille without the effects of aging, causing her Kim Naderi to fade into a distant memory. Conversely, the ears were not as kind to Stephen. His body became frailer, but his iron grip on the title of Grand Master only tightened. On a recent assignment, Camille stumbled upon a naive Piltoveran's ill-fated engagement, which unraveled a series of events that revealed the depth of Stephen's treachery. The lies that had driven Hakim away now threatened to tear Camille and the clan apart. In that moment of revelation, she recognized Stephen's greedy schemes for what they truly were, self-serving and no longer in the family's best interest. Discarding the last remnants of sentiment she had for her brother, Camille seized control of Clan Ferros. Now, Camille manages the family's public affairs to her grandniece, whom she installed as Clan Master, allowing her to handle the more clandestine operations that ensured the family's success. Embracing her transformation into something more than human, Camille has taken on the role of a problem solver, equipped with the sharp judgment her enhancements provide. With Hex Crystal's energy coursing through her veins, Camille has never been one to remain idle, finding vitality in well-executed industrial espionage, a freshly brewed cup of tea, and long walks through the grey. Thanks for joining me on this journey through Camille's story. If you loved what you heard, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to Lion Drag for more lore-packed adventures. And don't forget to join our Discord. 
It's a cozy space for lore lovers to connect and discuss all things related to our favorite stories. Until next time, keep the lore alive. Thank you.